One of the life-changing events for me was in high school. They were building a media center, and I walked past this door, and there was all this equipment, and a guy looked at some blueprints scratching his head, and I couldn't stay away. I said, what's going on in here? He said, this is going to be a TV studio. You want to help me put it together? That was where uh, I got the bug. I've been involved with video ever since. My name is David Sieg. We're here in Fletcher, North Carolina at ZFX with my ancient Scanimate machine. The primary thing the Scanimate did that nobody could do before was easily move words. So really, it was the beginning of motion graphics. From about 75 to 85, if you saw moving animation on TV, it was either shot frame at a time on film, which took forever, or it came out of one of the 10 Scanimate machines that was ever built. NBC Sports, ABC Sports, CBS Evening News. We had a scene in the first Star Wars. It was everywhere. This is the Scanimate room. Whew. It's gotten hot in here. These are the only two that I know of that work. I have the first R&D machine and I have the last one ever produced. It's just got a very distinct look that can't be replicated. It's sort of the visual equivalent of like a Moog synthesizer. With analog, it's, it's a continuously variable thing that you can adjust. When it's in the initial position, I'm going to put an oscillator on depth. One of the nice things about this Canimate is that as you adjust something, as you turn the knob, you immediately see it. It's just continuous. That's analog. You plug in things to make your animation. I mean, that's really where the term plug-in came from. It's very tangible. You can affect the image with your hands. I mean, it's you can almost touch it. You can't touch any of this digital stuff. It's in the computer somewhere. With the Scanimate, you're literally photographing light that's coming off a phosphor screen. This is a very abbreviated version of the animator's cheat book. For example, if you've got a logo and you want it pushed back in perspective, you hook horizontal ramp to a semi-amp with a bias pot, multiply them together into a gain pot, and feed that to final section vertical. So these are fairly simple effects. Oh, that's those NASA machines. That's what's recorded on this tape. I'm I'm gonna have to get that working. When everybody went to high def, they literally threw all of this stuff out. We're in a throwaway society. Your iPhone quits working, you go get another one and throw the old one away. But this stuff was made to be fixed. It doesn't matter what the machine is. If, if there's a guy that has been responsible for maintaining and keeping the machine working for years and years, he hates to see that machine go into a landfill. I could give it to the computer museum tomorrow, but the fact that it's working to me is the value of it. I don't really want to just have it be a static display somewhere. You, you listen to an old album, it takes you back. And I think this kind of animation, this kind of look, sort of takes you back to that era. I don't care that much about moving words. The thing that's fun with the Scanimate to me is to plug oscillators in and have these patterns that are just endless. There's not anything like it. I guess, you know, some people would say I'm crazy and it'll never amount to anything, but it's been worth it to me.